And with that, Amicus balances his plate of food in his paws as he strides out of the room, leaving me to go into the bathroom. I quickly use the toilet again, suddenly glad I don't have to use a public toilet like one of the ones I've seen in drawings in many Roman history books. The shower is easy enough to understand, and the water is immediately warm and pleasant, so I don't have to bother with the temperature. Wow, isn't that a dream? Yeah. Not this having really, to fiddle this with really a shower? Is a sci-fi story. How could this possibly be They'll never be figure real? that out in real life. <laughs> There are several glass bottles of soap, so I choose one that smells the best and give myself a quick wash. When I'm done, I grab a towel off the wall and dry off before wrapping it around my waist. I think about putting my clothes on, but the idea of stepping back into the my, into that underwear has me hesitating. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all, we've all been there before. I'm hesitating about that underwear right there. Instead, I open the door and I'm greeted to the sight of Amicus sitting on the edge of the bed, looking off to the side upon his lap holding a brush. His head snaps in my direction before he immediately averts his eyes. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to see. I, I thought you'd be dressed. Hey, it's fine, I've got the towel on. Slowly, Amicus turns his gaze back to me, eyes drifting down my torso before immediately snapping back up again. Ew. Oh, uh, I thought you hated any sort of nudity. Not really, just the genitals. Even then, I don't hate it. It's just more private. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and Mika seems to be staring at me. And I start to feel a little self-conscious. Is everything okay? Amicus looks away again. Sorry, I... I'm just not used to seeing you like that. I've only seen humans with clothing, so I just sort of imagined you always to be that way. Just, like... <laughs> <laughs> like like I said, you know, like the furry, anthropomorphic furry hair, like with their cute little fur, have to look yeah. us, at us gross, pale, fleshy people. Yeah. And we, we cannot be as appealing. I can't believe that it's possible like, that we could be equally as appealing. The idea that any kind of anthropomorphic animal would ever be attracted to a person doesn't make sense to me. Because we're probably naked looking and gross. <laughs> But that's like exotic, like wow. I guess someone just has a wild hair. I, <laughs> I guess. I mean, people are in defeat. There's a lot of weird questions you can ask. I mean, <laughs> I I get that there's somebody for everybody. But like I said, I just, we're just like naked mole rat people. Naked mole rat. Someone's fursona is a naked mole rat. And I'm sure it looks almost like a person, <laughs> like a naked person. Yeah, I mean, there's also just people that have monkeys and stuff too. Yeah, but yeah. even they got cute little hair. I don't know. Well, my clothes are dirty, so I'm going to have to ask you about maybe getting some clean ones, or at least until you can get me that tailor. Oh, uh, of course. Come, send us some robes from storage. Children's robes, please. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this is so small. The, uh, I'm just thinking about all the lewds that have been done of the, uh, what is it? <sighs> what are those skinless cats? No, hairless cats. Oh, Very importantly no, different why? word. There's, uh, because there's the, uh... I think there's a major character in Dragon Ball Super that is uh, oh, one of those guys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but isn't he like a dark colored one? He's purple. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't look like flesh toned. Yeah, so that's, that makes it better. I then. think it does make it a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> he's, still like, he's probably still like a weird, wrinkly, fleshy thing. Dude, Membranous. Just imagine his, his <laughs> I don't know, just imagine his. <laughs> I just can't get over how that entire breed of cat looks like it's just entirely a ball sack. Yeah. <laughs> like, just everywhere. <laughs> just the Because rats are... Uh, cats are so... Like, they have too much skin. They're really loose and elastic, and that's hidden by all the hair. But they're super weird, and that's why they have... There's all the jokes about how they're like fluids and stuff. But when you so, when they don't have hair, it's what, you can see what they look like. And you're like, no. I've seen, uh, I've seen skinny pigs before. Which are skinny ha hairless pigs? guinea pigs, oh, which oh. is also like, why, why do you want that? Uh, <laughs> why would you want that? Uh, my dog, why? my dog is very close to hairless enough. She's got a very, very naked, like, she's got a very naked belly, and so she yeah. looks, she looks lewd all the time. <laughs> Nips out. That's a, that's <laughs> as hairless as I want my pets to be. <laughs> it's already too much. It's, it's, it's already very close to being like a little bit sketchy. I feel like she needs some sensor bars. When you pet your dog, the texture's It different. feels like you're petting a person. Yeah, like you, the question is raised <laughs> of what it's like to pet skin, because it's mostly there. When you're like, she rolls over and you pet her, and you're like, all right, well, this is just mostly 
like awkwardly textured skin and a bunch into, of nipples yeah like broken up by nipples <laughs> <laughs> she's a mess she doesn't know she looks this way no <laughs> but i'm like kiki put some clothes on <laughs> anyway it's, there's a reason she's popular at the dog park okay did you read this oh <laughs> yes amicus thanks of course I stand there awkwardly for a few seconds till Amicus seems to snap back to reality again. Oop, there goes gravity. Oop, there goes... <laughs> <laughs> Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> he holds up the brush. Anyway, I thought maybe you'd like to be groomed too. I feel it's only fair after what you did for me. Oh. Oh, well, it's only on my head. No, it's not. Don't lie to me. <laughs> all the easier for me then. Amicus grins. Well, all right. I walk over to the bed and sit with my back to the wolf. Amicus adjusts his seating to face me more directly, then starts to run the brush gently through my hair. We sit in silence for a bit, and I start to enjoy the feeling of the brushing, especially the way the firm bristles run across my scalp, giving me shivers up and down my neck. Sorry for talking so much earlier, I'm, I'm not used to being able to talk to someone. The palace is a bit lonely. So having a friendly conversation with someone other than calm is a bit of a novelty. Amicus chuckles. That was probably why I was having so much trouble focusing on my studies today. I was so excited to come back home and speak with you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing that makes me a little feel a little bad for the wolf. Yeah, you lonely loser. I suppose being the prospective emperor doesn't allow you to have many friends, and being in such an empty palace definitely seems lonesome. It means we have no competition, guys. It means he is socially maladjusted. It means it'll be easy to swoop in. <laughs> I guess that's why Alex told me to bas basically the same thing. You're fine. And I didn't mean to be too harsh earlier, I know it's not your fault. No, I think we're on the same page on that one. All the more reason to unite against Cassius, eh? Oh. As if he'd forgotten something, Amicus's other paw comes around my side, and on his palm I see two purple grapes. I managed to snatch a few off of, of those off of Alexios's earring. He wasn't too happy about it about that. <laughs> Want one? <laughs> Seriously? I take one, more out of being nice to Amicus than anything, but when I bite into it, I can't help but notice how juicy and sweet it is. Amicus talks to me with a grape in his mouth. Mmm. I don't know why, but his grape earrings always taste the best. <laughs> By the way, if you don't mind, I invited Alex to our outing tomorrow. Cassius is going to be away to do some speeches, and is leaving Alex behind for once. Of course not, we got along really well. I lean my head back, allowing the wolf to continue the brushing. Your f fur hair, you call it? It's not like a wolf's hair, but it's rather nice. I smile. Thank you, Amicus. If you like, I can do this for you every day. I feel that's fair. I have to admit that I really like this, so I accept. Yeah, sure. It feels really nice. I hear some thumping sounds and imagine it's Amicus's tail wagging against the bed. <laughs> So, washing you, brushing you, and making you smell nice are all of my duties? Well, that, and accompanying me to important meetings and public outings. But all you do during those is stand there and look civilized. Yeah, that's what you keep telling me. This all seems pretty easy. Though, there is one thing you can do for me before I go to bed. Oh no! What is it? <laughs> oh my! The face. <laughs> what? Well, uh, a full of body massage. I look over my shoulder at him. Or we can just stick with the other duties. I laugh and Amicus's ears come back up. He continues to brush for a while before, oh, for a while longer before finally setting it aside. There, looks much better now. He gave us like a center part. And he, like, <laughs> he made us look like a complete dork. No, be in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Center parts are back, actually. They are. That's what I've noticed is that they make fun of people from that group in the '90s because they all have side parts, and that now now people keep having center parts. Dude, I just <laughs> I can't I can't pull that off, dude. Like I can't yeah. I can't go back to that. That was like me as a little child. That was me in like the third grade. I can't yeah. do this again. No, I had the I had the fucking center part in a in high school. I always think like, of like, like Boy Meets World. Yeah, Boy Meets World, where you, where that one friend just has the really straight hair and he has it right down the middle and it just falls flat on both <laughs> sides, like right next to the ears, like a bowl cut but without the without the front. <laughs> like, oh no, that was very in at that time, and everyone's name was like Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Corey's. <laughs> Uh, I gently run my hand over the air and have to my hair and have to agree that it feels softer than it's ever felt before. Does it though? Or is that just the feeling in the air? But anyway, Marco, I am looking forward to these months ahead with you, even though we started off a bit poorly. I look back at the wolf at his earnest but tentative smile. He's definitely a man of contradictions, rash half the time, but considerate most of the time. I'm not sure what to make of him. But at this point, I feel like I can tr at least trust him, and that's saying a lot after what we put, what he put me through. I smile back. Yeah, me too. The next day, Amicus wakes me up by gently shaking my shoulder. Hey. Hey, Marco, wake up. I roll over on my sofa, groggily pulling the blanket up around me as I shiver. Ah, it's so cold in here. Oh, I can turn up the heat if you'd like. It's just that I tend to sweat a little when it gets too warm. These dogs sweat? I was, I was gonna say, <laughs> that that's not what I know about dogs. Could you, could you just, uh, could just give me a better blanket? Of course. I'm in just my underwear, my Romanesque underwear. Last night, Amicus had shown me a bit awkwardly how to tie it on. Like I said, having to tie on your underwear seems really inconvenient, but yeah. very cute. While it's comfortable, I, it always feels a little loose, and there's a constant worry that it's just going to drop off at some point. Anyway, we should get going. Alex is probably already waiting for us. While it's comfortable... oh. <laughs> I don't know how I ended up going backwards. You just want to read the underwear line I again. I just did something, apparently. It's because the, this controls on the bottom of the screen, so I think if I hit the joystick or something, it like quietly highlights something like, go back, without me noticing. I rub the sleep from my eyes, drawing the blanket around myself a bit more tightly. For what? Uh, we're going to the island for a picnic. You wanted something to do, didn't you? That sounds like fun. Oh, yeah, right. I get up and grab my new robe off the back of the sofa. Don't bother with a shower today since we'll be swimming. Well, I will anyway. He doesn't even know if we can swim or not. Amic <laughs> Amicus moves, the bathroom, moves to the bathroom and pulls out a large glass bottle filled with a clear liquid. He pours it into the glass cap and notices me watching. Oh, would you like to try some? I suppose your species cares about dental hygiene, considering your teeth look alright. Thanks. <laughs> what is it? A wash that simply cleans the teeth, keeps the breath from becoming offensively odorous. I wish most dogs would learn this. <laughs> dogs that use mouthwash. Yeah, that'd be great. And just mouthwash, apparently. He holds out the cap, and I take it from him as he just pours the liquid straight into his mouth. I sniff it, and though I expected a minty smell, it's floral instead. Is this all you use to clean your teeth? Amicus swishes the liquid around his mouth for a while, then spits it into the sink. It removes any surface level debris, but you could you should get a deeper cleaning from a drone at least once a week. I can show you that later too if you'd like. Imagine a floating drone trying to clean your teeth. That'd be, that'd be, that kind of sounds terrifying. I kind of think I might prefer that over having to brush every day. Like if I could just do that once a week and yeah. it equaled out to the same amount, then I could just. It's probably nicer than brushing yourself ever, but it's just like menacing a little bit. A weird floating thing coming at you. I would accept it. Maybe. Honestly, you're supposed to use this every morning, but I forgot yesterday and all the excitement that we had. I lift the liquid-filled cap to my mouth, and with just a little hesitation, I pour it in. The taste reminds me of walking into a room that's just been sprayed with air freshener. Oh no. 
Not exactly pleasant, but when I spit it into the sink, I notice bits of what I assume to be plaque floating down the drain, and my mouth does feel a lot more fresh. Guess it works. Amicus seems impatient, though, shifting his weight from one foot to the other. Ready, Marco? Uh, yeah, sure. Do you have bathing suits or something? Uh, like clothes for swimming? Amicus steps out of the room and into the main hallway as I follow him. At the same time, I finish tying on my robe, trying to make sure everything is correctly in place. No, we swim nude, but if you prefer to have something on, you could use your undergarments. I can't imagine that would be comfortable, but Alex does it. Just as he says the cat's name, I see him standing in the hall, carrying a heavy-looking basket in both arms. Once he sees us, he smiles. Hello, Amicus. Hello, Marco. It's good to see you again. How are you this morning? I'm about to respond, but Amicus is already speaking. Good, good. You got all the food, Alex? Uh, yeah. Though are you sure it's not against protocol that I took all of this? Well, it would be if I didn't approve it. Now let's go. Alex and I follow the excited wolf's swishing tail as we head toward the front archways, an area that I haven't seen have been to before. <clears throat> I hear a familiar grunt, and we all stop and turn around. Ooh. I'm trying to remember. I did a poll on Twitter about how to pronounce his name, but then it might have been that both of my an options, Kato and, and Kato, were both wrong. I think, so much, I think a bunch of comments were saying it's Kato. Uh, maybe. There's too many A's. <laughs> a, is, a is a bad letter. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. That, that, that fuck Kato, you, Kato, and Kato are all options for A. And avocado? There's, pro there's probably more. Yeah, avocado. <laughs> it looks like it's been sliced open like a avocado. Boom. Burn. Take that, old man. He's like, I don't know what an avocado is. <laughs> also, it's avocado, you, <laughs> you fucking twerp. <laughs> That's probably what he'd say to you. <laughs> Kato stands there watching us, stoic as always. I look forward to the comments about how we're wrong still. <laughs> Where might you three be off to? Uh, hello, Kato. We're going for a swim. You pronounced my name differently yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really you? <laughs> uh, yeah, have you been replaced by an imposter? <laughs> a swim? I can't ex exactly tell what's going on behind the visor, but the tone in his voice doesn't seem all that enthusiastic. He wants to go too, guys. Amicus seems to sense it too. Y yes. A moment of silence goes by. You know you have combat training today, Amicus. Well, yes, but only for part of the day. We'll be back shortly after noon. Kato's face twitches, and I can sense the disapproval coming off him in waves. Then he turns his head slightly in my direction. You're taking the pets? I quickly fix my face into a middle distance stare. <laughs> uh, yes, I, th I thought we could all use a little fresh air. Kato goes on staring for a moment, and I start to believe what Amicus said about Kato not having a good mood. Finally, the old wolf turns his attention back to Amicus. Well, I have some of my own duties to take care of this morning, but I expect you to be in the amphitheater by the 11th hour. Do not be late. With that, he turns and stalks down the hall before disappearing around a marble corner. Amicus lets out a breath. Ugh. Thought he was going to cancel our outing altogether. All right, let's go before anyone else tries to stop us. Amicus quickly turns around the archways again and leads out to the warm morning air. You seem very eager, Amicus. Well, I haven't been swimming for a few weeks now, and I need a good exercise. As we, as we walk, I notice Alex huffing and puffing, struggling with the basket, so I hold out my hand. Here, do you need help? Oh, I don't want to inconvenience you. I reach out and take the handle of the basket, and Alex doesn't resist as I pull it out of his paws. It's heavy, but not impossible to carry. I heft it in both hands as we walk down the path toward the lake. 
Are you sure it's not too heavy? I'm fine. Though I think someone else might be able to handle it a bit better than us, especially since I imagine it's mostly his food. Amicus's ears perk at the pointed statement. <laughs> oh, is it heavy? Amicus turns and yanks the basket from me, easily swinging it in one paw. Should have said something. Though I'll have to give it back once we get to shore, I'll be swimming to the island. I frown. Is it far? Well, of course, you'll be taking the sightseer. What's that? Alex moves up to walk alongside me. You'll see. It's sort of a hovercraft for sightseeing, as the name implies. After a few minutes, we reach the shore where there's a small gazebo with various boats underneath it. That's like a photograph, right? Like, is that what the is like, this, uh, like a yeah, photograph, and then a, you do a glare over yeah, it? Yeah, this is a fil this is a photograph with a filter on it. Mm. It's not a painting. Pretty sure. It looks pretty though. It's usually pretty easy to clock. <laughs> We're like, yeah, definitely. There's also what uh, they actually did at the beginning of the game too, when they showed uh, Rome. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they've been pretty good about having uh, custom backgrounds for everything, but Rome was a picture. I wouldn't want to draw that. So. Yeah. <laughs> There's also what sort of looks like a jet ski, and next to that is a glass box with an open top. This is what Alex and a Amicus walk up to, the wolf leaning over to drop the picnic basket inside. Once he does that, he strips off his underwear and tosses it into the glass craft as well. I look away and notice Alex do the same, his ears down as he blushes furiously. Trying to ignore the wolf, I walk up to the strange little craft, noticing that there's an open space on the side of the box that allows us to get in. The floor is glass as well, and I can see the dirt and vegetation underneath us. Race you to the island! Amicus cheerfully waves at us before running into the lake the wolf's bushy tail swishing around over his naked butt. <laughs> Ugh, so inappropriate. Alex shakes his head and turns to the slanted glass panel attached to the side of the craft. He touches it, and several bright characters come to life on the screen. A few seconds later, our little glass craft levitates off the ground and starts to move over to the water, albeit at a very slow pace. Wow, what is this thing? A sightseeing craft, parental tech, so it's very safe and easy to navigate. I watch as we start to float over the slightly choppy water, Amicus already about 10 meters out in front of us. He's a pretty good swimmer. We're just slow. That's why he turned this into a race, because he knows we won't beat him, even if we're going at full speed. Sure enough, Amicus starts to widen the gap. I notice Alex's ears twitching about as he navigates our craft looking left and right while, you av while avoiding looking at the water altogether. Oh, he's a cat. Do you not like swimming? <clears throat> oh, I hate large bodies of water. It's a bit stressful coming out here, honestly, but the island is serene, and for the most part, it, it makes the trip worth it. Ah, felines are kind of like that on er, my planet, too. It's a good save. <laughs> uh <laughs> I cringe inwardly as I almost reveal the name of my planet. <clears throat> A badly named planet that is just... We called it dirt? <laughs> it was I pretty mean, blatant, and Alex goes on like he didn't even notice. Well, yes. Similar origins and all. But honestly, I'm a bit surprised that you're doing so well yourself. Or that you even decided to come out here. That comes off as a little strange to me, but I'm distracted watching Amicus get closer to the island. Maybe only about 50 meters now. I start to get an idea, though. Judging by the distance between us, Amicus, and the island... I feel like I might be able to beat him. I grin, then start stripping off my robe. What are you doing? We're not at the island yet. Alex blushes furiously again, looking away. I'm gonna beat him. What? I grab onto the edge of the glass barrier and swing my legs over it. No! Alex actually tries to lunge for me, his paws just barely missing as I plunge into the lake. I don't have much time to think about why, because I'm instantly surrounded by freezing cold water. I come up gasping from the shock of it before I spot the direction of the island and start swimming towards it. It's been a while since I've really had a chance to swim. I'd always been pretty good at it though, and soon enough I get into the familiar motions of putting one arm ahead of the other, while turning my head to take breaths. While this is going on I can still hear Alex shouting behind me. 
But then, just as I'm feeling like I'm about to gain on Amicus, I get rammed by something heavy and furry that suddenly starts to pull me into its grasp. At first, I've been wonder I wonder if I've been captured by some kind of Adastrian sea monster. Maybe that's why Alex is freaking out. But just as I'm about to resign myself to that fate... Marco! Don't worry, I've got you! I start fighting against the big furry arms wrapped around me, and I feel Amicus kicking his legs under mine, sort of pulling me towards the island that's just a few dozen meters away now. What? What are you doing? I try to pull away, but Amicus keeps me in that fierce death grip, refusing to loosen at all. By Gallon! I look up and see Alexios dumping out the basket full of food into the sightseer before throwing the basket at me. Use this, it will keep you above water! It hits me in the face before <laughs> gently bobbing away in the waves. What the hell is going on? I try to pull away from Amicus one last time, but give up, leaning into his chest with a bewildered expression on my face. He kicks his feet awkwardly under mine before I finally feel, feel our feet drag into the shifting sand under the water. Even then, Amicus doesn't let me go. He keeps his firm grip around my waist as he pulls me to shore, bringing me onto the little island. Are you all right? Amicus puts his paws on my shoulders, his wide eyes looking into mine, breathing heavily. Yes, what the hell just happened? I rub my nose where the basket hit me in the face, and that's when <laughs> Alex's little craft pushes gently onto the sand. He hops out, running up to us. I don't know what happened, Amicus. He just jumped out. I'm sorry, I couldn't stop him. Alex bows deeply, ears flat and trembling. I start to wonder if maybe there's something in the water that I wasn't supposed to come into contact with. I look at my skin, but everything seems fine. I finally look at, up at Amicus, trying to ignore his dick as it <laughs> swings around between his legs. <laughs> Amicus seems to notice at the same time and covers up his crotch with a paw, keeping the other on my shoulder. Can you just explain to me what happened? Oh. Amicus frowns at me. Well, you can't swim. You're hopeless in water. That's why I wanted you in the craft. Alex's lim uh, lips tremble a bit, as if about to cry. You're not born with natural swimming abilities. Whenever a primate falls into water, they're almost sure to drown. Are you sure you're okay? I'm so, so sorry. The way they explain to me how primates work reminds me that they still might not consider me to be the same intelligence level as them. It's like I don't know my own species capabilities, that I just jumped in because I'm a stupid barbarian. Do you pr I'm trying to think. You know, or or orangutans really orang orangutans swim very well. Do they? Yes. I just believed them. I was like, I think I've heard that before. And, it's, and that's, I just left it at that. <laughs> um, I don't know if... I'm not really aware if, if, if like gorillas or like chimps can swim. I'm not entirely sure about that one. But I know orangutans are pretty good. Hmm. There's like really good uh, videos of them swimming where the videos are taken underwater. And it's really kind of weird seeing their long arms just kind of swoop oh, yeah, they're around. They're weird. They're like really weird animals. They're beautiful. <laughs> no, I'm going to make fun of them. No, I love them. It irritates me, but both of them look, look almost traumatized. Especially Amicus. The paw, not concealing his crotch, is still firmly locked on my shoulder, as as if worried I'm going to go running off into the water again. Yeah, you stupid idiot. <laughs> Guys, I can swim. I mean, yeah, it's not natural for us, but we can learn. I've known how to swim since I was a kid. I mean, I don't think dog, like, well, the wolf here, I don't think, like, I mean, I don't know. Are wolves really great swimmers? Not necessarily. I mean, they doggy paddle. Was Amicus doggy paddling here? That's a, that's a, that's a funny <laughs> vision. <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to say, like, I think dogs figure it out pretty naturally because they just try to do anything and it pretty much works. <laughs> I, I like when you hold a dog right above the water and they do that thing where they just start kicking their legs before they even touch the water. the water. Yeah. And they look really sad about it. At least my dog does, because she doesn't like swimming. So she just looks really depressed. Yeah. Like, she's, like, really upset. And she, her legs just anyway. start moving. Like, she knows <laughs> she's going to have to do it eventually. <laughs> Them doing that in advance always makes me wonder, yeah, like, how much of it is instinct and how much of it is learned. I'm sure it's instinct, but I just don't think they're in, they're amazing swimmers. Like, I don't think they can go pretty far. I'm pretty sure yeah. they would drown. Like, but I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking out of my ass right now. I think they, just, I think right they just know the simians that they've seen to just be famous for being shit at it. <laughs> See, I have to look that up later, because I'm not really sure if that's true. Yeah. 
They still stare back at me as if not understanding. Really? Well, yeah. Do you think I just jumped out of the, the thing to just drown myself? Amicus lets go of my shoulder to cover his dick with both paws now. I don't know. I, I know you're unhappy here, so I wasn't sure. Oh. I laugh. I'm not that unhappy. I'm I'm fine. And you know, I'm not an idiot. I, I thought you'd know this by now, Amicus. Things go quiet then. Alex looking off to the side with his ears down, Amicus standing awkwardly and covering his crotch with both paws. So did I, I ruin our outing? No, no, I just need to remember that you're not a typical child. Now, uh, let's try to relax and have some fun. It's the whole reason we came out here, after all. Alex still looks a bit dejected, looking off toward the sightseer. I ruined our food. I'm sorry. Alex bows again. I remember how Alex isn't really supposed to know about my intelligence, or anything about me, really. But if he's bothered by the conversation that just takes place, he's not showing it. Amicus shrugs. Stop bowing, it makes me feel strange. Kind of even funnier with her bowing to just a naked guy. <laughs> the naked wolf ambles over to the craft as he leans over to look at the, clutter the cluttered mess inside. His tail lifts and we get a view of his butt again. Alex looks away, <laughs> blushing, but at this point I think I've got- I've given up on trying not to see the various naked parts of this wolf. Being in the nude seems pretty natural for him, even if he tries to hide it from us. I think we can salvage a decent meal out of this. The wine's good. Honey, you didn't burn the beer. <laughs> Amicus lifts a large bottle of wine into the air, still not turning around. I- I- I'll sort through it, Amicus. Please, enjoy your swimming exercises in the meantime. Alex quickly moves to the... to start the... and go back. Shit. No. Ah! Right, there we go. Right. Oh yeah, the, the select button works. Alex quickly moves to start gathering up the food, head down. Well, alright. And ears up, Alex. We're here to have fun. Alex puts his ears up, but doesn't lift his head to look at us. Oh, right. The wolf grins at me, dripping, dipping his muzzle down at his crotch. The cats are just like you when it comes to this sort of thing. Anyway, I'll get in the water so you won't have to keep averting your eyes. You should join me now that you, we know you know how to swim, Marco. I start to follow, then look back at the cat. Um, do you need help, Alex? Alex shakes his head quickly, and I can see that he's still blushing. Go on and swim, Marco. I'll just be sunbathing anyway. There isn't much room in the sightseer for two people, and Amicus seems to be waiting for me, so I follow the wolf out toward the water. Intelligent conversation and a swimming partner. I have a pet that can do it all. Amicus shoulders me as we walked along the beach, making me stumble. Hey. I say it warningly, even though I, I know he's joking. You know, I have to wonder why you're taking me out here if you didn't think I could swim. Everyone enjoys the beach, whether they can swim or not. The sand becomes too hot as I walk along the beach, so I have to jog the last ten meters or so to the wet sand, sighing as a wave cools my burning feet. Amicus catches up. Too hot? I suppose I should remember that you are a bit more fragile than the other species. Fragile? Well, a bit. I mean, when we fought on the ship, I had to hold back a lot. I give Amicus a shove, the wolf stumbling more than he probably would have would have if he, he wasn't covering his chunk. Whoa, hey! With that, I wade out into the shallows, the water quickly coming up to my shoulders. I stick to the shore, treading water as I watch Amicus splash around, doing a sort of lunging swim that reminds me of the butterfly stroke, just a lot more clumsy. After a few minutes, he swims up next to me. Are you doing all right? I'm still unsure of you being out in the water. Hey, don't start. I know what I'm doing. All right, all right. But even experienced swimmers can have accidents. So let me know if you need any help or anything. Amicus stands right in front of me, his, his fur plastered tightly against his chest. I will. The wolf shields his eyes from the sun with a paw as he looks around. 
Anyway, do you want to have a race around the island? We can stay in the shallows. I actually used to do it with Cass all the time as a pup. I look around the small island, deciding that the distance is short enough that I can manage it. Alright, sure. Alright, Marco, but be warned. I won't go easy on you just because you're a primate. I swim past Amicus. Go! Well, hey! I hear the wolf splash noisily behind, be, behind me as he tries to catch up. I do fairly well for the first half of our little race, managing to get around the backside of the island without the wolf catching up to me. I notice that this part of the island is covered in dense trees and vegetation with no beach to speak of. It's at this point that Amicus overtakes me with his big, lunging strokes, breathing hard each time he comes up. I realize how hard he's trying, and I wonder if he's actually afraid of losing. It's clear that there's a competitive edge to him, and I guess that makes sense if he's so determined to beat Cassius to the throne. So we come around the final bend. I fall further behind, quickly losing stamina as the muscles burn as in, in my arms and legs. Amica seems to notice and slows down a bit towards the end, allowing me to catch up some before he reaches the same spot we started at. For a moment, we both just gasp for breath in the shallows, though Amicus grins. <sighs> <sighs> I win. <laughs> I roll my eyes and wait until I can breathe evenly again. Whatever. You've got way more muscle than I do. That isn't really an advantage. Amicus still breathes heavily, and I wonder how much effort he actually put into beating me. Besides, I've got, I've got all this fur weighing me down and you don't. You know, competitive swimmers usually shave their fur down near the skin. That makes me wonder what a shaved wolf would look like. Back to our previous <laughs> conversation. <laughs> Guess I just have bad stamina. Actually, you did a lot better than I thought you would. Had me worried for the few, first few minutes. What do you call that swimming style? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just called freestyle. Amicus moves closer, his breathing finally under control. Could you teach me? To swim? Looks like you've already got that down. I mean your style of swimming. You beat me, didn't you? Why would you want to learn my style? I say that, but I think I know that what Amicus is getting at. He has a very clumsy way of swimming. Sort of like he's fighting the water itself. Like he's doggy paddling. <laughs> Amicus harumphs, blowing some droplets of water from his nose. It looked effective. I'd just like to try it if you're willing to show me. I smile. Alright. For the next hour, I show the wolf how to swim freestyle. At the beginning, it kind of feels like I'm teaching a toddler how to swim. The first few tries end up with him thrashing around in the water like he's about to drown, showering me with lake water until I have to reach out and grab him to make him stop. Is freestyle when you go overhead? Like on each side, what? Back and forth? I think freestyles when you do what you picture as swimming, where it's like, yeah, you you, you like scoop forward with one hand and the other one basically. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's freestyle, but I need to watch the anime free to figure <laughs> out if I'm correct. Because I'm like, I don't actually know the names of, like, I do remember what a breaststroke is. I like the frog is. one. I like the frog, the frog one. one. I think it's the breaststroke that Amicus was doing. The breaststroke's fun. I like the the frog one. I'm really the not a one. I'm not a good swimmer at all. In fact, thinking about this swimming in a lake. Like, swimming far out in a lake would make me very yeah. stressed. Swimming in the ocean makes me really stressed. Watching other people swim in the ocean makes me very worried about them. Whenever I see somebody swim across a lake, I'm like, I kind of want to try that. But I'm also like, I haven't swum in, like, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what the last time was that I had to actually, like, swim as opposed to just being, like, on a beach or at the edge of a lake where you just kind of, like, you can technically, like, swim a bit, but, like... You, the, the ground's just right there. You're not really like thinking about it or trying. Well, I mean, this is yeah. In this situation where you're swimming like across the lake, I get the impression that you're very, very high above the ground, and yeah. I, I just imagine like you tiring out and having a yeah. an issue. I've never swum that far before. I, I doggy paddle is my default, <laughs> to be honest. It keeps you it keeps you level. I decide to start with the arms first, standing in the shallows and showing him how I put one arm ahead of the other in a sort of rhythm. And soon you'll be swimming out that door. <laughs> oh, I love that song. Again, I have to stand, stand close to the naked wolf, grabbing his big furry arms and showing him how to move them. Once he has that down, he quickly learns how to add his feet into the mix, and pretty soon he's swimming back and forth, 
picking up speed to the point where I'd have no hope of keeping up with him. I realized then that Amicus is a very fast learner. <laughs> this is so much better. Do you know any other styles? Amicus paddles happily around me. Well, I guess back floating, but no, not really. I'm not a professional swimmer. Amicus stands, water running down his furry body. Want to race again? So it's the person that wants to just destroy you a Mario Kart over and over again and <laughs> not give you a chance. <laughs> he grins at me. I laugh. No, I'm exhausted after teaching you all that. Oh, don't be such a pup. Or are you afraid of losing again? Amicus winks to lighten his words. I think about flicking him on the nose like he's a misbehaving dog, but I resist the urge. No, I'm tired, and I'm hungry. And if I stay out any longer, I'm probably going to get a sunburn. Reminding Amicus that there's food on the beach seems to change his mind, and he follows me into the shallows. 